Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Thomas Peterson. Hello and welcome to another Current Affairs here at Copenhagen Suborbitals. Today we have Mass Wilson with us, and Mass, so you make some of our electronics. Yeah, you're a member of the board, and you also do some of our public relations work. I do. And then you have also made the launch control box. Yeah. So this is what we'll be using for the next two launch. So uh, I presume I will be operating it. Yeah, hopefully. For launch, uh, but you have made it. So could you tell us a little bit about what uh, what is it and, and how does it fit into the communications link from uh, mission control and to the rocket? Yeah, sure. Under ideal conditions, this box would actually never be used, as you know. Uh, but it serves as a link between all our computer systems and the radio that uplinks and downlinks data from the rocket. So if you look over here, for example, we have the Ethernet connection that connects the, uh, the mission control to the computer system, and we have the... Uh, RS232 link here, which is the link to the radio system. So the reason why we have this box is because you, as flight director on this mission, you can control the startup of the, uh, of the launch sequence. So you start by arming the igniter, and then you push the start button. And that then sends a signal to the computer to start the auto sequence. Yes. And if everything goes well, then you won't have to do anything but that, because then mm. the computer will control every, everything. Yeah, so, so then the uh, engine controller on next to two will basically do the rest. Yeah. yeah. But so the box lets us do a few other things. Precisely. The box is there because we can have, uh, we can have scenarios where the flight director needs to override some of the computer commands. If you can see something visually, or if you, we get some telemetry where you can say, okay, now the computer has misinterpreted some data or something, then you need to be able to override the computer commands. Yeah. And so some of the things we can do is, uh, for instance, when we uh, pressurize the rocket, yeah. so we have a, a system that, that uh, makes sure the pressure doesn't get too high in the propellant tanks. Yeah. But in the event it gets too high anyway, then we have sort of a manual ventilation here. Yeah. For example, if you push this button up here, called fuel vent, if you hold this down, then it will open the vent valve on the fuel tank and just depressurize the tank. Underneath, we have a button called fuel pulse, which means if you just push that once, then it will just give a, a, a quick pulse of the vent valve. So you can you can let out pressure in, in, in small steps if you want that. And the last one down here is called fuel purge which is simply a function to purge the entire fuel tank, simply let out all the fuel of the fuel tank. Yes. And so similarly we have for the, uh, for the lock side. Yeah, yes. we have. Right. So, so this is sort of uh, prior to launch, yeah. this part of, uh, of the box. Then we, uh, so we have the start button over here, and then we have three uh, extra buttons here in, the, in this row. Yeah, and these are all re related to the flight. This is uh, functions where you can override the, uh, the release commands of the parachutes. And if we, if we start from the bottom, we have the two, uh, the two push out, which uh, pushes out the parachute, fires the gas, gas generators in the, in the nose cone. We have the, uh, the, the uh, two cutter, and then we have the release uh, nose. And obviously, these needs to be fi fired in the correct sequence. Yeah. We need so to uh, release uh, the nose cone before we do, uh, before we do any, anything else. Otherwise, uh, we will just uh, fire the, the push out and nothing will happen really. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So uh, then we have three uh, LEDs up here. Yeah. Uh, what does that These, these uh, diodes up here is uh, your indication so that you can see that all the systems are running. It says LP, ENG and GNC. And these are basically just heartbeat functions. If they are blinking, then you can see that the mission control and the computer system has contact to the launch platform box, the engine controller, and the GNC system on the rocket. Mm -hmm. So you can easily see when these are blinking, then everything is good, and we have, we have connection to all the major systems. Yes. And so this box will be uh, with the two of us on yeah. the upper deck of Vostok. Yeah. 
and then uh, who has got downstairs yeah. with the mission control computer. Yeah, and Peter, see, Peter, uh, together with uh, Fleming Nybo, who will be a DNC on the on the mission, they have control o- over all the same fe- features that we have. Uh, actually, they have a, lo- a lot more features in the computer systems, so they can, they can see uh, the same that we can. But but this is just to have uh, to have a, an option. To, to react uh, very quickly from the bridge. Uh, and also, uh, it has been made with very large buttons on purpose so that uh, you can actually quite easily hit the, the function tool you need. Yeah. So if we have some indication that the uh, parachute has not been deployed, for instance, if uh, we on the FIDO computer can see the rocket is coming down fast without a parachute, yeah. then we can manually try and, and release precisely, or, uh, precisely. jettison the parachute. Yeah. Yes. So that is the uh, the purpose of, of the uh, mission control computer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Mass, for a uh, run through of the uh, functionalities of the mission control box. Thank you. I'm looking forward to using it. Yes. Yes. So am I. So am I. It will be a pleasure to uh, press the start button once <laughs> more. So thank you, Mass. Yeah. And uh, that was it for this time. Uh, remember, you can ask questions to us on ask at cupsup.com if you want us to to answer any questions during this video. Thank you. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page.